In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the Divine Will, I enter into the Holy Divine Will. Come, Divine Will, come beat in my every heartbeat, come breathe in my every breath, come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future, in, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary, and Louisa, in, with, and for all, that all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls, giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come, reign on earth. Fiat. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Our Lady, Queen of Saints. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now listen, dear child, Louisa, to the point one can reach. When the divine will takes operating life in the soul... And the human will lets its work uh, without impeding its death. This fiat, which by nature possesses the generative virtue, generates all good, all goods in the soul. It renders the soul fecund, giving the soul maternity over all, over all goods, and over the one God who created her. So what is, what is Our Lady saying? She's saying, Louisa, you have to listen to this, to the point that you can reach when the divine will takes operating life in you, Louisa, and the human will lets the divine will work without impeding its death, this fiat, which by nature possesses the generative virtue, generates all good in you, Louisa. The fiat renders Louisa fecund, and giving Louisa maternity over all, over all goods, and over the one God who created you, Louisa. So that's what Our Lady is saying. And I think it's in volume 26, Our Lady said that, uh, you, that you, Louisa, have an unsevered umbilical cord to the womb of the Trinity. So Louisa receives divine life from the Trinity, unsevered umbilical cord. And then she said, then Jesus says, and all souls who want to live in the divine will must have an unsevered umbilical cord to you, Louisa. And then all those souls will call you, Louisa, their little mama. And all those souls will be the little children of the Holy Divine Will. So, what Jesus says in volume 19 is, he says, I do not want you stillborn. He doesn't want that umbilical cord to be cut. He wants us to be one with Jesus and Mary through Louisa. And this is a thing that's so astonishing. And, and this is why there's, there's so much, I think, difficulty with uh, many, many people is they're eliminating Louisa. It's Louisa's gift. This is a diary of Louisa. Our Lady is talking to Louisa. And once this gift is given to Louisa, then Louisa gives it to us. We look at what Jesus and Mary did with Louisa, this, this life that they gave to Louisa, and then Jesus says, if you want this life, then you have to be one with her. So, 
Maternity says and means true love, heroic love, a love which is content with dying to give to, to give life to the one it has generated. Without this, the word maternity is sterile. It is empty uh, and is reduced to a mere word, but does not exist in fact. Therefore, my child, if you want the generation of all goods, let the fiat take its operating life in you, which will give you maternity, and you will love everyone with the love of a mother. And I, Mary, your mother, will teach you how to fecundate this maternity, all holy, all divine, within you, Louisa. You know, I've met, in, in, in the last 20 years, I've met, I think, three or four different women who have told me that they take the place of Louisa. That all souls, all grace flows from God through them to all souls. Now, why? Because they read this and they see the you as them. And it's, it's in no way, I mean, they're a little, it's like both oars weren't in the water, I think. It's, a, it, it's this is Louisa. It's Louisa, Louisa. And Louisa becomes the, the third mother. I mean, it's Jesus' second mother, Jesus says. Louisa, you are my second mother. Uh... Who, who are my mother and my brothers? Those that do the will of the Father, Jesus says. So when we look at, our, when we look at Mary, Mary is our, really, our, 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 our first mother. Our human mother is, is, uh, is our mother. But then, you know, those that are adopted have a fourth mother. But we get a third mother, and that third mother is Louisa. Uh, Louisa becomes the little mama of the little children of the Holy Divine Will. So we want, to, we want to be generated by her. We want, we want her life, the life that Jesus and Mary gave to Louisa. So to day 21. Dearest child, do not fear, okay? Now, Louisa's a little worried because our lady just told Louisa that uh, Louisa's going to generate all people. She's going to have a maternity. Uh, she's going to love everyone with the love of a mother. So all of a sudden she says, Louisa, do not fear. Trust your mother. Every, pour everything into my heart, and I will take care. I will take everything into account. I will be your mama. I, Mary, will change your pains into light, and will use them to expand the boundaries of the kingdom of the divine will within your soul, Louisa. So put everything aside for now, and listen to me. I, Mary, want to tell you what the little king Jesus worked in my maternal womb. And how your mama did not lose even one breath of little Jesus. So everything that Jesus did, Jesus did Our Lady uh, uh, did with him. My child, in the little humanity of Jesus continued to grow, as the little chi- chi- humanity of Jesus continued to grow, united hypostatically with the divinity. My maternal womb was very narrow, dark. There was not a glimmer of light, and I saw Jesus in my maternal womb, immobile, enwrapped in, in a deep night. But do you know how, do you know what formed this darkness so intense for the infant Jesus? It was the human will in which man had voluntarily wrapped himself. For as many sins as man committed, so many abuses, abysses of darkness did he form around and within himself in such a way as to be rendered immobile to doing good or to doing what God wanted to. So, my dear Jesus, in order to put to flight the darkness of such a deep night in which man had made himself the prisoner of his own tenantibus will to the point of losing the motion of doing good, chose the sweet prison of his mother and voluntarily exposed himself to immobility for nine months. My child, if you knew how martyred was my maternal heart in seeing little Jesus immobile, crying and sighing in my little womb, his ardent heartbeat palpitated so very strongly, fidgeting with love. He made his heartbeat heard in every heart, past, present, and future, to ask every heart for pity's sake for their souls, to enclose the souls into the light of his divinity, because for love of souls, Jesus had voluntarily exchanged the light for dark, his light for darkness, so that all might obtain true light in order to reach safety. 
My child, who can tell you what my little Jesus suffered in my womb? Unheard of and indescribable pains. Jesus was endowed with full reason. He was God. He was man. And his love was so great that it was as if he, Jesus, put aside the infinite seas of joy, infinite seas of happiness, infinite seas of light, and plunged his tiny little humanity into seas of darkness, seas of bitterness, seas of unhappiness, and of seas of misery, which souls had prepared for him. And little Jesus took them all upon his shoulders, as if they were his own. My child, Louisa, true love never says enough. It does not look at pains, and by dint of pains it searches for the loved ones. And when it gives its own life to give back to the beloved, only then is it content. My child, listen to your mother. Do you see what great evil it is to do your human will? Not only do you prepare a night for your Jesus and for yourself, but you form seas of bitterness, of of happiness, and of misery in which you remain so engulfed as to be able to uh, be unable to escape therefore be attentive make me happy by saying to me mary i louisa want always to do the divine will so we want i with louisa with louisa i want always to do the divine will we want we want to say the same thing that louisa said i with louisa i always want to do the divine will Now listen, my child, little Jesus in spasms of love was in the act of taking the step to come out to the light of the day. His anxiousness, his ardent eyes and desires to embrace the creature, the souls, to make himself seen and to look at uh, the souls in order to enrapture souls to himself uh, and gave him no more respite. And just as one day... He had put himself on the lookout at the doors of heaven in order to enclose himself in my womb. So now Jesus was in the act of putting himself on the lookout at the doors of my womb, which was more than heaven. So And so the Son of the Eternal Word, Jesus, rises in the world and forms it, in it the full midday. There will be night no longer for poor creatures, nor dawn, nor daybreak, but always sunshine, more than at the fullness of the day. So when Jesus came to the earth, there was no more darkness. Jesus, the light of the world, you know, comes to the world. And Jesus gave us his church. He gave us his mother. He gave us the sacraments. He gave us the sacramentals. He gave us all the the fullness of of the Catholic Church. You know, there's really no reason why we should be unhappy. And now with Louisa, there should be no reason. Uh, Going to Louisa is, is a... Is a sign of, uh, is, a, is a is a cause of, of great joy. I talked to uh, a contemplative nun, a mother vicar of a, of a convent, and she said that now going to Louisa, everything is easier. Everything is is much easier because it's it's the will of God that we want. It's it's to live in the will of God that we want. And again, that's what we do when we. When we go to Louisa uh, again, uh, she possesses the true life of Jesus, the true life of Mary, and the only way that we can possess this life of Jesus and Mary is through Louisa. I mean, that's what the writings say, and, and the writings now are in the Vatican, and they're, they're going over these writings, and if you want to know what's happening in the Vatican right now, go to uh, volume 16, February 10th, uh, 1924. In volume 16, February 10th, 1924, that's exactly what is going on in the Vatican. I think you could have great delight out of that. Volume 16, February, February 10th, 1924. So your mama felt she could no longer contain Jesus within herself. Seas of divine light, seas of divine love inundated me, and just as I conceived Jesus within a sea of divine light, within a sea of divine light, he came out from my maternal womb. Now, if you go to Corrado, you'll see a picture in right outside of Louisa's room where there is Joseph, St. Joseph, and Louisa looking at Our Lady and, and Jesus emanating from Our Lady. Uh coming right from her womb, right through her stomach, and it's there's there's the baby Jesus, and that's how Jesus was was born. 
That's why Our Lady was ever a virgin. It, it happened in a way that uh, is so astonishing that Louisa describes this, and, and because Louisa was there, um, Louisa was there at uh, at the uh, in Bethlehem. Louisa was there at Jesus' birth. Louisa was there at uh, Jesus' crucifixion and death. Louisa was there with Jesus his whole life. Because, again, there's no time or space in the divine will. And that's one of the great blessings that uh, Jesus gave Louisa, was to be with, with him and Our Lady. And uh, when we are one with Louisa, we can also be with Jesus and Mary um, at Golgotha, um, at Bethlehem. So, dear child, for one who lives in the divine will, everything is light and everything converts into divine light. In rapturing this light, I, Mary, waited to hug my little Jesus in my arms. And as he came out of my womb, I heard the first loving wailings. And the angel of the Lord placed Jesus in my arms and I squeezed him so very tightly to my heart. I, Mary, gave Jesus my first kiss and little Jesus gave me his. Enough now. Tomorrow I'll wait for you again to continue the narration of the birth of Jesus. Day 22. My dearest child, oh how I long to, for you to come into my arms, to have the great contentment of being able to say to our little baby king, do not cry, my pretty one. See, here with us is my little child, Louisa, who wants to recognize you, Jesus, as king and to give you, Jesus, dominion within her soul, to let you, Jesus, lay in Louisa the kingdom of your holy divine will. So again, we see Louisa was there. There's no time or space in the divine will. Louisa was there. And the first person she saw next to Mary was Louisa, the little daughter of the divine will. Now, my child, Louisa, while you are all intent on longing for the little baby Jesus, pay attention and listen to me. You must know that it was midnight when the little newborn king came out of my maternal womb. But the night turned into day. The one Jesus, who was the Lord of night of light, put to flight the night of the human will, the night of sin, the night of all evils, and as a sign of what he was doing in, in the order of souls, by means of his usual omnipotent fiat, the midnight turned into the most refulgent daylight. All created things ran to praise their creator, God, in that little humanity of Jesus. The sun ran to give its first kisses of light to the baby, little baby Jesus and to warm him with its heat. The ruling wind purified the air of the stable with its waves and with its sweet moaning said to Jesus, I love you. The heavens were shaken from the very foundations, their very foundations, and the earth exalted and trembled down to the abyss. The sea roared with its gigantic waves, and some all created things recognized that their creator was now in their midst, and all competed in singing his praises. The very angels forming light in the air with melodious voices, which all could hear say and said, Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth to men of good will. The celestial baby is now born in the grotto of Bethlehem, wrapped in poor, swaddling clothes. So we see how um, everything is to give praise to God. Everything wants to give praise to God. God became man. This is unheard of. God becomes man. The angels can't believe it. They're just, they're just astonished. One of the things, that one of the tricks of the, of the evil one is to twist words. For example, a lot of people... Uh, especially on television, say, glory to God in the highest and peace on earth, goodwill toward men. And that's not the truth. It's peace on earth to men of God's will. Peace on earth to men of goodwill. It's not, it's not to goodwill toward men. That's, that's, that's how the devil just changes words around and uh, to just twist what God really is saying. Peace on earth to those who live in the divine will. That's what it says. So much so that the shepherds who were in the vigil listened to the angelic voices and ran to visit the little, the little divine king. My dear child, Louisa, continue to listen to me. As I, Mary, received Jesus into my arms and Jesus gave and Jesus uh, gave Jesus my first kiss, I, Mary, felt the need of love to give 
um, something of my own to my little son and offering him my breast, I gave Jesus abundant milk, milk formed in my person by the divine fiat itself, in order to nourish little King Jesus. But who can tell you what I felt in doing this? And the seas of grace, of love, of sanctity that my divine son gave to me in return. Then I wrapped Jesus in poor but clean little clothes and placed Jesus in the manger. This was his will. And I, Mary, uh, could uh, not do without executing it. But before doing this, I shared Jesus with St. Joseph, placing him in his arms. And oh, how he rejoiced. He pressed Jesus to his heart. And the sweet little baby poured torrents of grace into his soul. And together with St. Joseph, we arranged the little hay in the manger and detaching him from my maternal arms, I, Mary, laid him, Jesus, in it. Your mama, enraptured by the beauty of the divine infant, remained kneeling before him most of the time. I, Mary, put all of the seeds of love and devotion which the divine will had formed in me to love Jesus, adore Jesus, and thank Jesus. And what did the little, little celestial baby do in the manger? A continuous act of the will of our celestial father, which was also his. Moaning and sighing, Je- sighing, Jesus wailed, cried, and called to everyone, saying in his loving moans, Come all of you, children of mine, for love of you I am born to sorrow and to tears. Come all of you to know the access of my love. Give me shelter in your hearts. Now think about this. For Christmas, I, I look down the street uh, where, where I live and I see reindeer and snowmen and snow, you know, Santa Claus and, you know, and I just, I'm astonished. You know, the, the one thing is, you know, what are we doing with, with our Christmas? Do we point to Jesus? Do we show that Jesus it has been born? Uh, do we... Um, most of my neighbors start at, at Thanksgiving with all their decorations and then at Christ, the day after Christmas they throw their tree out. You know, Christmas begins on Christmas Day. Advent is before that. You know, it's a, if we follow what the church says, you, you know, we, we are awaiting Jesus. And then when Christmas happens, Christmas begins Christmas Day and then ends on the birth, uh, excuse me, the baptism of Jesus. In, in January. Yeah. So again, what, what are we called to do? Follow the church. You know, have no lights on, and then you put your lights on as everybody turns their lights off. I mean, really begin to, to follow what the church is saying. You know, um, to, to point to Jesus. Make sure you have a manger. Make sure Jesus is seen. Santa Claus, I mean, you know, St. Nicholas is nice, but... Reindeer are nice, snowmen are nice, but it's not what Christmas is about. It's Jesus born. And and come all of you, children of mine, for love of you I am born to sorrows to tears. Come all of you to know the access of my love. Give me shelter in your hearts. That would be a nice banner about the size of your house outside, wouldn't it? And there was coming a coming and going of shepherds who came to visit him, Jesus, and to all Jesus. And to all, Jesus gave his sweet gaze and his loving smile, even amid his tears. Now, my child Louisa, a little word to you. You must know that all my joys was to hold my dear son Jesus on my lap. But the divine will made me understand that I should place Jesus in the, in the manger at everyone's disposal. And whoever, so that whoever wanted, could caress him, kiss him, and take him in their arms, as if he, Jesus, were his own. He, Jesus, was the little king of all. Therefore, they had to the right to make of him a sweet pledge of love. And I remember on Christmas Eve, uh, the, the Pope uh, picks up the, the, the baby Jesus and kisses him. You know, we have an opportunity to have the baby Jesus uh, in our house, to really to hold him and to kiss him. Uh, Jesus will take that veneration as if you were actually kissing him. It's like when you kiss the cross. He takes that as you're actually kissing him. So therefore, you know, when you venerate the cross, when you venerate uh, the little baby Jesus, you, you can be sure that Jesus is accepting that. And in time, in eternity, you're going to see uh, that your veneration was accepted. 
And I, Mary, in order to fulfill the supreme volition, deprive myself of my innocent joys, beginning with works and sacrifices, the office of mother, giving Jesus to all, past, present, and future. My child, the divine will is demanding and wants everything, even the sacrifice of the holiest things. And according to circumstances, even the greatest sacrifice of depriving oneself of Jesus himself. However, the divine will does, does so in order to extend its kingdom even more and to multiply the life of Jesus himself. In fact, when the creature deprives himself, herself of Jesus out of love for Jesus, her heroism and sacrifice is so great that she has the virtue of producing a new life of Jesus to be able to form another dwelling for Jesus. Therefore, dear child Louisa, be attentive. Never do not deny anything to the divine will under any pretext. So again, what was Jesus that he's saying? Even if you have to deprive yourself of Jesus for love of others, you know, don't deny the divine will of anything. Again, you know, you might be in a situation where you, you can't go to holy mass because you're 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 stuck someplace or stuck taking care of somebody. Do not worry. She says, it's very clear. You know, uh, don't get angry, don't get upset. She says that uh, you will form another Jesus, dwelling for Jesus. And never deny anything to the divine will. Under any pretext, you know, I have to go to Holy Mass. And I, that means I'm going to leave this person in need in order to go to Holy Mass. No, that's not God's will. God's will is that you stay with that person. You know, it's, it's very, very important that... Uh, you, you, you recognize the divine will around you in all situations. And uh, instead of, you know, wanting, wanting, wanting your need, your need, your need, Our Lady says there will be times when you, when you will have to surrender everything, as she did, uh, for the greater glory of God. Day 23. My dear child. My dearest child, Louisa, how happy I am to have you close to me, to be able to teach you how the kingdom of the divine will can lay itself in all things, all crosses, all sorrows, and all humiliations invested by the life of the divine fiat are like raw materials, uh, raw material in its hand, hands in order to nourish its kingdom and to extend it more and more. So, crosses, sorrows, humiliations. You know, the, the old saying is, to become humble, you must be humiliated. Uh, so God has a great time humiliating. He loves to. He loves it. It says, he says it's a raw material in his hands. Why? To extend the kingdom even more. The crosses. He loves crosses. I mean, he embraced his. And when he sees a generous soul, he gives that soul a cross. And if the soul can uh, drag the cross behind him, complaining, the soul can you know, try to get rid of the cross, but it's attached to him. Or the soul can embrace the cross like Jesus. You know, the, the same thing with sorrows. You know, sorrows are, are part of life. Like I said right at the beginning, this is the valley of tears. Uh, it, is, it is not heaven. Yet, in this valley of tears, in these sorrows that we go through, there is great peace, joy, and happiness. You, you begin to see the one who really suffered the most, the one who had the greatest cross, the one who had the greatest humiliation, and that is Jesus and Mary. And Jesus and Mary gave these crosses, these sorrows, these humiliations to Louisa uh, to, and to souls that they love. So if you don't have a cross, if you don't have a sorrow, if you don't have a humiliation, you don't have to ask for one because you're going to get them. But, uh, you know, sometimes God gives us a reprieve at, at times. Uh, but uh, our life is to be one with Jesus, Mary, and Louisa. And that is filled with crosses, sorrows, and humiliations. And why? Because uh, this is raw material in God's hands where he can form new divine lives through, through, through those uh, difficulties. Therefore, pay attention to me. Listen to your mother Mary. I continued my stay in the grotto of Bethlehem with Jesus and dear St. Joseph. And how happy we were. Through the presence of the divine infant, Jesus and the divine will operated in us. That little, that little grotto had changed into paradise. It is true that pains and tears were not lacking. 
but compared to the immense seas of joy, of happiness, and of light, which the divine fiat made arise in each one of our acts, they were just little drops plunged into the into these seas. And then the sweet and lovable presence of my dear son was a happiness of the greatest kind. Now, dear child, Louisa, you must know that the eighth day arrived at the birth of the celestial baby into the light of the day, and the divine fiat sounded the hour of sorrow, ordering us to circumcise the charming little baby. It was the most painful cut which little Jesus was to go through, and the law of those times that the, all the firstborn had to undergo this painful cut. It, called, it can be called the law of sin. But my son was innocent, and his law was the law of love. But in spite of all of this, since Jesus came to find not the man king, but the man decayed, in order to become his brother and to elevate him, Jesus wanted to lower himself, submitting himself to the law. My child, Louisa, St. Joseph and I felt a shiver of pain, but fearless and without hesitation, we called the minister, and we had Jesus circumcised with a most painful cut. At the bitter pain, baby Jesus cried and flung himself, flung himself into my arms, asking for help. St. Joseph and I blended our tears with his. We gathered the first blood shed by Jesus for the love of souls, and we gave to him the name Jesus, powerful name, which was to make heaven and earth tremble in even hell a name which was to be the bomb, defense, and help for every heart. So we see that uh, this name of Jesus, a lot of the Protestants say, in the name of Jesus. You know, and like the name is magical. No, it's to take the place of Jesus in his name. See, when the, when the priest gives the blessing, it is in the name of Jesus. It is in his place, in his state. So it's it's not a magical name, but uh, you know when we when we say you know Lord Jesus in your name we take his place. In your name I ask you to bless these people. In your name, see fathers have a responsibility of blessing their children. You know, uh, praying for their children, anointing their children. Uh, holy oil is again very very important for not only doctors. But uh, for family members uh, to bless those that are sick, those that are ill, um, it's it's very very important that uh, we use the the sacramentals of the church. Uh, uh, holy water, exercise holy water, especially, is very very important uh, to to uh, exercise or basically get rid of of the demonic. The demons are all around. I mean, they're all around. And, but not to be afraid of them. They're just like nasty, you know, pesty flies. You know, you, you get a good fly swatter and you can really get them. But, but the, the fly swatter we use is, is holy water, exercise holy water. You know, and you look at the poor kids today. They, they, they have no teaching of Catholic faith. They have no understanding of, of who Jesus is. You know, they, they brand themselves, carve themselves, tattoo themselves, pierce themselves. Why? Because this is what pagans do. And uh, uh, people are, are, especially the youth, they've, they're making their bodies uh, uh, the same thing that pagans use their bodies for. The, the great thing is that pagans can be converted. And, uh, you know, and, uh, the, 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 when Our Lady of Guadalupe came in, 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 in uh, Europe, I think they lost uh, uh, six thousand, or excuse me, six million became Protestant at that same at that time that Our Lady appeared in Guadalupe, and in Guadalupe it was what um, fourteen million or something like that became Catholic. Uh, it's, it was double what the people left from the church to go to the Church of England. Uh, what happened here is the people became, from paganism they became Catholic. Uh, God wins. God always wins. So if you're praying, you know, in the divine will, and you have uh, nieces and nephews, uh, sons and daughters who are tattooed and branded and pierced and carved, you know, um, don't worry. You know, God is going to take care of them. God is going to do what you want, what you wish. Remember that lady? You know, the day she says, uh, even the dogs eat the scraps from their table. And Jesus says, you know, that was pretty good. He says, um, 
you, your wish will come to pass. I give you your wish, your prayer. So our prayers are basically our wish. And God is going to answer our prayers in a way that will astonish us. So don't worry about, you know, the tattooed wonders out there. God is going to take care of them. So, he says, uh, Okay. Okay. Uh, In every act of the human will is the cut. Did I read that part? Uh, a which is inflicted a wound that is open and thus to baby with his most painful cut prepared the remedy for all human wounds now my child another surprise a new star shines under the vault of the heavens and with its light it is searching for adorers to lead them to recognize and to adore baby Jesus I mean that, that's why we go to um, adoration to adore God to love God to praise God to thank God Three individuals, each distinct from the other, are touched by the star. It invest, it, and invested by supernatural light, followed the star, which led them to the grotto of Bethlehem, to the feet of baby Jesus. What was not the astonishment of these magi, magi kings in recognizing in that divine fiat, infant, the king of heaven and earth, the one God who had come to love and to save all. In fact, when the Magi were in the act of adoring Jesus, enraptured by that celestial beauty, the newborn baby made his divinity shine forth from his little humanity, and the grotto turned into paradise. So much so that they were not able to separate themselves from the feet of the divine infant. Not before Jesus again withdrew the light of his divinity within his humanity. And I, Mary, exercising the office of mother, spoke at length of the descent of the word and fortified them in faith, hope, and charity, symbolized by their gifts offered to Jesus. Now think about that. It's, Our Lady was the teacher of the, the first Christian to, to give this teaching of Jesus to uh, those that were not Jews. Then, full of joy, they withdrew to their regions to be his first propagators. So they, what was it said? Uh, it was later on in the life of Jesus. Uh, how did that go? I remember something that uh, he met the Magi or something like that later on in life. I think. I can't remember. Okay. Okay, so again, the, the first ones to hear about Jesus from the first Christian was Mary. Mary talked to these uh, three wise men about the Catholic faith. And then they brought the Catholic faith to back to their regions. My dear child, do not move from my side. Follow me everywhere. Okay, and again, that's what we want. We want to be one with Our Lady. Do not move from her side. You know, wear the scapular. Pray the rosary. Forty days from the birth of our little king, Jesus are about to sound when the divine fiat calls us to the temple in order to fulfill the law of the presentation of my son. So we went to the temple. It was the first time that we went out together with my sweet baby. A vein of sorrow opened in my heart. I was going to offer Jesus as victim for the salvation of all souls, past, present, and future. And when we entered the temple and first adored the divine majesty, then we called the priest, and placing Jesus in his arms, I made, I, Mary, made the offering of the celestial baby to the eternal Father, offering Jesus in sacrifice, for the salvation of all souls, past, present, and future. The priest was Simeon, and as I placed Jesus in his arms, Simeon recognized that Jesus was the divine word and exalted with immense joy, and after the offering assumed the attitude of prophet. He prophesied all my sorrows, and oh, how the supreme fiat sounded over my maternal heart, thoroughly and with vibrating sound, the cruel tragedy of all the pains of my little son. But what pierced me the most were the words that the Holy Prophet spoke to me. This dear baby will be the salvation and the ruin of many and will be the target of contradictions. Okay, what would hurt her the most is Jesus will save souls and souls will go to hell because of Jesus. Either they, the, the, the salvation and the ruin of many. Uh, and Jesus will be ripped apart with contradictions. So what, what, what tore her apart the most is the souls that will be lost. If the divine will had not sustained me, I would have died instantly of pure pain. But 
the divine will gave me life and it used and used it to form in me the kingdom of sorrows within the kingdom of its will therefore in addition to the rights of mother which i had over all i acquired the right of mother and queen of all sorrows ah yes with my sorrows i acquired the little coin to pay the debts of my children and also those of the ungrateful children Now my child you must know that in the light of the divine will I already knew all the sorrows I was to suffer even more than that which the holy prophet had told me but in that act so solemn of offering my own son Jesus in hearing it being repeated to me I Mary felt so pierced that my heart bled and deep lacerations lacerations opened in my soul Now listen to your mother Mary in your sufferings Louisa in the painful encounters which are not lacking for you Louisa never lose heart but with heroic love let the divine will take its royal pace place in your pains that the divine will may convert them those pains into little coins of infinite value with with which you will be able to pay the debts of all your brothers and sisters to ransom your brothers and sisters from the slavery of the human will and to make your brothers and sisters enter again as free children into the kingdom of the divine fiat so who is the one that pays our debt it's not only jesus and mary it's now louisa louisa you, you will be able to pay the debt of your brothers now what does jesus say he says on my right is my mother who suffered more than any soul next to me and then he says in vine 15 and 16 and my left is louisa who suffered more than any soul next to my mother and remember what jesus said in the higher volumes he said that uh, all the sufferings of all the saints combined all the martyrdoms of all the saints combined do not compare to one act of louisa one eye blink of louisa why because the the saints suffered in uh in a saintly way a good way a holy way louisa suffered uh in a divine manner louisa suffering like jesus like our lady says louisa you're the one through all your sufferings that you're going to ransom souls from the slavery of the human will so who buys us it's it's jesus and mary through louisa and make these souls enter as free children children of the divine will into the kingdom of the divine fiat so we'll end there and then we'll begin the uh divine mercy chapel dearest lord jesus i thank you for your lessons of today free me from living one single instant outside of your will have pity on me and do not permit that i either know or acquire any other life except that of your divine will fiat et amen in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen